and gentlemen we want to welcome you today this is a blessed day the lord's day in the first instance and in the second instance this day is celebrated as father's day and it is a day when we call upon our men to recognize who they are as leaders of the society leaders in the home wherever they are and to set the example, especially for so many of our boys who are going astray, and to once again revisit what it means to be a man, what it means to be a father. And so we want to welcome you. All our men, happy Father's Day. All our fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, those who are aspiring and perspiring to be fathers, we welcome you this morning, and we wish you a happy Father's Day. We welcome you who are not only the fathers, but those who are our listeners from the congregations, the Mount Zion, Barrytown, Lilliput uh, congregations, and by extension, Formites, and those in the Jamaican, wider Jamaican society and context. Um, in the Caribbean, we know persons listen to us, and in North America and other places in Europe, and so on. We just want to welcome you, and may God bless and inspire you, and minister to your heart, especially especially those of our men. What better song to start with um, today than to share with us this song, Rise Up, O Men of God. Father, we come before you today because you are God, you are the greatest of fathers. 
We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, to have laid down his life for us. And also we thank you for your Holy Spirit that is at work in the church. And Father, we just lift up today your name. You have been the greatest example to us of what it means to be a father. And oh God, you will love us to care for us. You never abandon us but you're always with us, taking care of us, supplying our needs according to your riches in glory. Lord, we see the atrocities with our boys and our men in the wider society. So many have gone astray, lost their sense of purpose and their sense of self-worth. And Father, we ask you to visit them that there'll be a turning around for our men in terms of restoring, oh God, restoring them and allowing them to stand up as leaders, representing your image in the society. We pray for all the fathers who have run off and left their children to, to grow on their own, especially with the mothers alone. We ask your Lord to arrest those fathers, and so that they will see you as their guide and their master. They will look to you, and, oh God, they will serve you in spirit and in truth. I pray that, God, for those who are broken, those who feel abandoned, Lord, that you will restore them at this time. Those who are hurting but feel that they are too man, O oh God Almighty, to talk about it and to resolve the issue so they continue to hurt and to be broken. We pray for those who have gone astray, that you will bring them back home like the prodigal son. And we pray for those who have not yet come into faith, and knowledge of you that god they will serve you and they will come to know you as lord and savior of their lives we pray for the broken those who are broken those who are sick and cast down we pray that you will heal them bring them peace and bring them restoration bless us god today in a powerful way and oh god minister peace to your children and on this blessed father's day Minister to our fathers. In your name we pray. Amen. That's the name of the Lord. And brothers and sisters, um, at this time, I want to share with us a passage of scripture from the book of Genesis. And yesterday, we are going back straight to the beginning as we look at the first Adam. And we're looking at, ver looking at verse 8 to 12 of Genesis 3. That's verse 8 to 12. And it says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam, his wife, hid them, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, 
Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou art naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me, gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Yes, this is the word of the Lord. Father, open our eyes to your word, and may you inspire us and bless us. And, O oh God, challenge us through this word. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to briefly reflect today on the topic, Adam, where art thou? The question God asked Adam in the Garden of Eden after they fell out of grace with him and acted in disobedience to God's command not to eat of the tree. Now the name Adam comes from the Hebrew word edema, edema meaning earth. Or it could it be that because he was made of the dust of the ground. And it's said to be, Adam is said to be the first man or the first of the human species to be made. He was not created, he was made. Because the Bible told us that, or tells us, that he was made from the dust of the ground. And he was made both male and female. Yes, it's interesting that the woman was already in the man. The woman was later taken from him. In Genesis 2 verse 21 to 22, the Bible tells us that the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, took out one of his rib and from that he made the woman. Now, Genesis 2 verse 7 says, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And this is why maybe it's called Adam, meaning from the earth, because from the dust we came, and to the dust we shall return. Now, Genesis 1 and verse 27 Genesis 1 and verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, just to um, confirm what I said earlier about the woman being made in the man. In the image of God created he, male and female. The distinguishing characteristics of human from other life forms is embedded and implied in the statement made in verse 27 that God created man in his own image, meaning that man was made like God in character and personality with a moral character, the ability also to, to do good and to do the right and to know both right and wrongs, the ability to reason, being capable of self-reflection and reasoning, with the capacity for immortality, indicating that Adam, like God, was to live forever. Man was designed to give leadership in the earth and to be God's representative on the earth, representing God's image. And when we say that man was made in the image of God, we are not thinking about an anthropomorphic view of the concept of image in the case that um, we feel that physiologically or physically speaking that Adam has some physical features of God because that's not so. The Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But I think it's more like the things I've described earlier that he was moral in character, the ability to do to know right from wrong, the ability to reason, be created righteous, the ability for self-reflection, and the ability with the capacity for, for righteousness and to live 
forever. God would fellowship, it seems, as is implied in the text with man from time to time. So he crowned him with honor and with glory and would visit him. That's why he came visited um, Adam and Eve. And I think Psalm 8 and verse 4 to 5 seem to buttress the point when Psalm the psalmist says, What is man, verse 4 to 5, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Yes, um, verse 5 says, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and with honor. Since God used to visit with Adam, it is obvious that it was sin that separated Adam from God. So when God came looking for Adam to have their regular fellowship, he could not find him. And according to verse 8, Adam and Eve heard the voice of God and they hid themselves. God says, Adam, where art thou? Yes, in verse 8 of Genesis 3, and they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Hmm? There seemed to be a personification of the voice of God. It didn't say God was walking. It says the voice of God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. As we see in other places in the Bible, the voice of God seems to, to be like acting, moving like a person. In this case, the voice was described as walking in the garden. Yes, the voice of God was seen as walking in the garden. Verse 8, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees. Now, it could also mean that this voice of the Lord walking was, was representative of the presence of God as he moved through the garden. Yes, when interpreted, brothers and sisters, it means it is, trans, it is translated that the voice of God was traversing back and forth through the garden. Right? Verse 29, um, Psalm 29 and verse 3, part A, also says the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God was looking for Adam, for in verse 9, it is said in verse 9, And the Lord God called him and said, Adam, where art thou? Yes, God is asking that question today for many of our men. He's searching for the Adams and he's saying, where art thou? This is a very loaded question. In other words, have you missed your position? Have you failed to be at the place where I left you? Where I thought I should find you? Are you still there? Why am I having to look for you, Adam? I don't think that um, God did not see where Adam was he being omnipresent and omniscient and all? I think he was calling Adam for self-identification, for self-affirmation. He was calling Adam, you know, in disappointment, knowing that Adam had gone away from where he left him. Yes, the fact that they were now hiding would indicate that the intimate fellowship with Adam and God was now broken. Now, it is sin, it is said, that separated God from Adam and Eve. Yes, sin, that three-letter um, word, which separate us from God. And today, as we see in the world, what is it that has separated man from God, the, our Adams from God? It is sin. Loving of pleasure more than the loving of God. The loving of self more than the loving of God. In verse 10, the Bible says, And Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden, Lord, and I was afraid and hid myself because I was naked 
and I hid myself. Now, before Adam never used to hide. Why is he hiding now? Because sin has showed forth his nakedness. In Isaiah 59 and verse 2 to 3, the Bible says, But your iniquities have separated us from, from um, God. Our iniquities have separated us from God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Verse 3, For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have muttered perverseness. In other words, that when there is sin in the lives of the Adams or man or woman for that matter, it will bring separation between God and us. Our Adams are still hiding from God today. Not many of them in the church. Yes, over 8%, 7 to 80% of our congregation are women. Our Adams are still hiding, hiding from the presence of the Lord. Our Adams are still hiding from God because of our sins. But we do not have to hide. For God has sent his son Jesus Christ to atone for our sins. And all we need to do is to come boldly to the throne of grace. So today the voice of God still ringing out in the garden. Adam, where art thou? God is calling our Adams to take our positions in society. Take our positions in the church. Take our positions in our community. Take our positions um, in the family. Take our positions as husbands. Take our positions as fathers. Take our positions as leaders. Take our positions where God wants us to do as, as protector, caring for the environment. Take our positions, brothers and sisters, where God wants us to be. Hmm? Because God has crowned us. Make us a crowning work of his creation. Crown us with glory and with honor. And God still wants his Adam to stand in their position. When God called Adam and said, We are, art thou, God is calling us to represent his image upon this earth, to promote righteousness, to promote a godly character and holiness, to establish moral standard and justice and truth. Deuteronomy 10. And verse 12 says, What does the Lord God requires of you but to fear the Lord your God, right? To walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart. Micah 6 and verse 8 says, He has shown you, O man of God, what is good and what does the Lord requires of thee but to do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. Yes, God is calling us, brothers and sisters, and God is calling especially our Adams to represent his image. Secondly, God is calling an Adam to offer leadership to the society and to the families. There is a divine imperative to our fathers, to men, as is implied in Ephesians 6 and verse 4, where the Bible says, And you fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. There is a place in the context of the family, in the lives of our children, especially our boys, that no one else can fill but the Adams. And God is calling on the Adams to assert themselves, to live up to their responsibility and to man it up in Jesus name yes thirdly God is calling for Adam to protect and to care for the earth and the environment there's so much abuse the chewing of garbage in the streams the, 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 the burning of things to of fuels and stuff to destroy the environment the, the destruction of the ozone layer yes the global pollution of the earth. And God is calling upon the Adam to dress 
to take care, to take care of the environment. Yes, second um, Genesis 2 and verse 15 says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. There are many of us today who we abuse and rape the society and the environment. God is calling upon us to protect it. Psalm 8 verse 6 to 8 says, You have made man to have rulership over the works of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet. Verse 7 says, All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field. And verse 8, The fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever pass through the paths of the sea. In other words, God has given us leadership. Some texts will say dominion over the earth. Where some people have problem with the use of dominion because that means that because we have dominion, we will abuse our, our, our natural environment, abuse the resources because we have control and dominion. But God has placed us there to be caretakers and to be protectors and also to be stewards. God is calling for Adam to eat bread by the sweat of their brow. And I have seen so many Adams who feel that they should scam their way into prosperity or to find a shortcut in order to have success in life. That's not the way God set it up. That's not the principle God laid down for Adam. You know what Genesis 3 and verse 19 part A says? In the sweat of your face or your brow, you shall eat bread till you return to the earth. In other words, once you sweat and work for that which you want, you will never suffer. Yes, work for what you want to provide and to take care of your children. Because the Bible says, if a man fails to take care of his family, he is worse than an infidel. Yes, and men who, who try to shun their responsibility to their children and to fatherhood is worse than an infidel or unbeliever or somebody who is 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 like a pagan who has no sense of responsibility and understand what family is about those who work for what they want in this life with the sweat and with their sweat and hands will never suffer and whosoever and whatsoever they do it shall be blessed and shall prosper they will never brothers and sisters suffer Whatever they get in life and acquire will never leave them. They will remain prosperous for all their lives. Simple working with the sweat of your brow and with your hands will bring prosperity. Come on, Adams. Drop the crop where we feel that we, can, we should make it in life by exploiting somebody else or ravaging the, the resources of somebody else. Too many, too many robbers and thieves in the society, in high places and low places. We need to work for that which we want. Come on, Adams. God call upon you to assert yourself today. Yes, I'm not beating up on the fathers because today is your day, but I, it, it breaks and pains my heart when we see our men shun their responsibility and who they are. So lastly, I want to say to our fathers today, that God is calling upon the Adams to be righteous men, to serve him in spirit and in truth. If you're going to be leaders in the society, heads of your family, then we have to be righteous men to serve the Lord in spirit and to serve him in truth. Yes, God is saying to the Adams today, return unto me and I will return unto you. Adam, where art thou? God search for you. Don't hide yourself behind the trees. Lurk behind the bushes and in dark places. Come to the light. Come to the fore. It is a calling upon you, Adam, for you to affirm yourself, a self-affirmation, to look into your being and to see that there are potential and qualities. Don't let the devil blind your eyes as to what you are, to let you feel that you're worthless, sitting at roadside needing 
uh, and all these things. You are better than that, Adam. God call upon you to assert, to affirm yourself and to take your stand in society, in your family, in your homes, in the workplace, in the private sector, wherever you are, to be a man, man up in the name of Jesus Christ and to be the father God calls you to be. God bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Nothing broken, nothing lacking, and nothing wanting in your life. Hallelujah. He'll do it.